First, it would have to cut through my robe. I began to think I could stop the pendulum there. I imagined the sound the pendulum would make as it cut the cloth. I thought and thought until I almost believed it was going to happen. I laughed and cried in turns as I moved from blind hope to despair. The pendulum was very close to me, and I struggled furiously to free my left arm. If I could break the strap holding my arm, I could stop the pendulum. But deep inside myself, I knew it would be easier to stop an avalanche than this swinging, deathly steel. I gasped and struggled at each swing. My eyes followed the blade as it went up. Then I closed them as it descended. Death would be a relief, but hope made me shrink away from the blade, causing all of my nerves to vibrate. Hope triumphs during torture and whispers to those condemned to death even in the dungeons of the Inquisition. I knew that ten or twelve swings would bring the steel into contact with my robe. With this observation, I suddenly felt the total calm of complete despair. For the first time in many hours, or perhaps days, I thought. I had been obsessed with the idea that the blade must cut my robe first, but now I realized that the strap tying me down was simply that, one long strap. The first swing of the blade across any part of the strap would free me. I would be able to unwind it with my left hand and escape the pendulum's blade. But I knew the steel would be too close, and the smallest struggle would mean death. Sad to find my last faint hope frustrated, I raised my head and looked down at my body. I should have known. The strap was wound around me in all directions, except in the path of the blade. As soon as I dropped my head back onto its wooden pillow, my mind flashed to my incomplete idea, the idea that had given me hope. The idea was now concrete, though it was weak and only half sane. With the nervous energy of despair, I attempted its execution. You must understand that for many hours, the area around me had been covered with rats. They were wild, bold, and hungry. Hundreds of red eyes watched and waited for me to stop moving. What food, I thought, have they been accustomed to in the pit? Perhaps it was better that I did not try to imagine the answer to that question. They had eaten almost all the meat on the plate next to me in spite of my efforts to stop them. I had fallen into an automatic waving motion with my left hand over the plate. In their eagerness, the vermin frequently bit into my fingers. Now I began to rub the strap wherever I could reach it with the oily juice remaining on the plate. When I finished, I raised my hand from the floor and lay still. Suddenly, all movement ceased. At first, the ravenous animals were confused and terrified. A moment later, one or two jumped up onto the wooden bed. This seemed to be a signal. Hundreds of rats leapt onto me. I lay still. Avoiding the swinging pendulum, they ran over my throat, their cold lips looking for my own. They ran over me and started to bite at the strap. I could hardly breathe from the weight of so many rats. Disgust choked me and I thought that I would faint again or begin to struggle and scream. Yet one more minute, and I felt that this torture would end. Suddenly I could see the strap start to move. I knew that they had eaten through it. Patience. That was what I needed. I had to live with this for only a few more seconds. With greater determination, I lay still. I was not wrong. I had not suffered in vain. I was free. The strap was torn and no longer held me down. But the pendulum pressed on my chest. It had already cut my robe. Twice it swung, and a sharp sense of pain shot through every nerve. The moment of escape had arrived. At a wave of my hand, the rats ran away. With a steady, slow, sideways movement, I lowered myself from the bed and out of reach of the deathly blade. For the moment, at least, I was free, free, but in the hands of the Inquisition. <laughs>